Hi, year 13s, I hope you're all keeping well and safe. Um, now, you'll be pleased to know that this is the final thing that I need you to do before um, your summer holidays. Um, and now that you should have completed the sort of comparative table between the US and UK um, constitutions, that double um, A3 spread that I put up, um, you're now ready to answer what we call a 12 mark examine question, um, which will appear on paper three of the edXL politics um, course, and that is the comparative politics paper um, focused on USA government and politics. Um, so what this question requires is for you to examine the significant differences between the US and UK constitutions. It is a 12 mark question. Um, and we'll just be going through the structure, um, sort of the, the points that you can write about um, for each of your paragraphs, and I'll be providing you with a, a model paragraph so that you only really then need to write um, two paragraphs. So the structure for the 12 mark question. Now, um, you will need to write three paragraphs to answer a 12 mark question effect effectively, and all three of these paragraphs will need to be focused on a significant difference between the US and UK constitutions and you can refer to a three spread um, to help you on that um, there's no need for an introduction um, because in an exam you'll only have around a maximum of 10 to 15 minutes to answer a 12 mark question and therefore um, there's no real need for um, you to introduce the points that you'll be talking about because you will do that in effect um, in your signpost sentence of each of the three paragraphs that you're writing. So each paragraph, of course, then requires a signpost sentence focused on one significant difference between the US and UK constitutions. There's no need to refer to the comparative theories, and we'll learn about these in September. So you don't need to concern yourself with either structural theory, rational theory, or cultural theory. We'll learn about what those theories are in September and how they're applicable to, to the different units that we're, that we're studying. Um, you will need to refer to at least three significant differences between the US and UK constitutions, and each of your paragraphs will therefore need to focus on one significant difference between both constitutions. Um, you will need to be analytical throughout your paragraphs to achieve high AO2 marks. Compare both constitutions in each paragraph, okay? That is the approach that you're taking. You're not going to talk about the US Constitution in one paragraph and then talk about the UK Constitution in the next. You need to be analytical throughout each of your paragraphs and therefore one paragraph will need to focus on a significant difference between both constitutions whereby you're comparing both side by side simultaneously. Um, and therefore the 12 marks, um, the breakdown of the assessment objectives is obviously AO1, you get six marks for your knowledge and understanding. Um, and you get six marks for your analysis of that knowledge and understanding for your for your AO2. Um, so just something to think about. What are the significant differences between the US and UK constitutions? And I'm sure that you'll be able to use your A3 sheet to identify the significant differences. Now, this is the key thing that we're focusing on, the most important significant differences between the US and UK constitutions. Um, just a little bit of guidance here. You'll need to ensure that you use appropriate vocabulary, comparative vocabulary, to ensure that you're enhancing and maximizing your analysis where possible. Um, so use terms like however, whereas, unlike, although, um, to maximize that comparative analysis between um, the US and the UK constitutions. Focus on the differences only. Sometimes you can get um, a question which asks you to examine the similarities um, between two things, but this asks you, to, asks you to examine the significant differences, so make sure that your analysis is focused and in your paragraphs are focused on those, those differences between the US and UK constitutions. Um, so the examples of significant differences include um, the amendment process, um, separation of powers, and um, sort of variations in regional power and how that's distributed as well. Um, so. Of course, now these are all AO1 points. You will need to think about how you will analyze each of these points to demonstrate the significant differences um, between the US and UK constitutions. So paragraph one, your first paragraph, um, which the model um, on the next slide is based on, um, can be sort of focused on your signpost sentence and your paragraph can be focused on um, the US, the fact that the US constitution is much more difficult to amend um, than the UK constitution because of the entrenched nature of the US Constitution, um, and you will be required to explain the differences in the nature of the constitutions here too. 
um, because the reason why the US Constitution is much more difficult to amend is because of its entrenched nature, the fact that it is safeguarded um, from short-term amendments through a complex amendment process. And the reason why it is safeguarded from short-term amendments is because the Founding Fathers didn't really want an over-powerful, centralised authority that had a free reign over amending uh, the US Constitution. Um, and also, then, for your in your second paragraph, you can talk about how the US Constitution has a complete separation of powers, but the UK Constitution has a fusion of powers. Um, just back, back to the first point. Um, the UK Constitution, in contrast, is unentrenched, um, and therefore it can be easily amended through a simple act of Parliament, which just requires a simple majority in um, both Houses of Parliament. Um, and so that comparative analysis is necessary to achieve both high AO1 and AO2 marks. Um, back to this one. So the US Constitution has a separation of powers, a complete separation of powers, whereby each of the three branches of government, the executive, the legislative branch, and the judiciary, are completely separated in terms of, for example, their buildings and also their personnel, with a couple of exceptions, obviously, um, the main one being the vice president, who is also who also sort of operates as um, president of, of the of the Senate. Um, now, so this complete separation of powers, um, as Richard Richard Nustat states, is that there uh, is a government of um, separated institutions which are sharing power. So the founding fathers really built this sort of intricate system of a separation of powers, where they wanted um, each of the different branches of government to work interdependently to work with each other to reach sort of um, compromise and consensus through their through their negotiations um, in contrast you've got the UK which has a fusion of powers um, and a, therefore it has a partial separation of powers so the branches that are fused together in um, the UK are the executive branch and the legislative branch primarily because of the fact that the government of the day um, sits in um, UK Parliament on, on the front bench um, and the governing party, um, the MPs who make up um, that government, they sit on the, the back bench of the, the governing side of Parliament, of the House of Commons. Um, and therefore, um, with this partial separation of powers, with this fusion of powers, you often have government being able to, to dominate Parliament when they have a large parliamentary majority as, as Boris Johnson's government does now. Um, one of the key sort of points to draw out here is that the judiciary in the UK only became completely independent after the Constitutional Reform Act of 2005, um, which outlined the future reform of the, the judicial branch. Um, and then you have the establishment of the, the Supreme Court in um, 2009, which really sort of marks the, the independence of, of the judiciary in the UK going forwards. Um, so that is also another significant difference that you that you can draw out the fact that in the US um, the judi the judiciary has always been independent, but in the UK um, the judiciary used to be part of what we call the the law lords, the House of Lords, um, and that has only been um, that has only become independent the judiciary in the UK fairly fairly recently after the two thousand and five Constitutional Reform Act. Um, in paragraph three. You can speak about um, regional power and how the, the U, how the U.S. has an entrenched, um, a constitutionally protected federal system, but the U.K. has a unitary system where power is divided between central and regional governments through through devolution. Um, and the key thing here is that um, the Tenth Amendment um, of the U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Tenth Amendment in that Bill of Rights. Um, actually protects, it entrenches the rights of states against the, the, the federal government, so that all powers that are not mentioned in the constitution for each of the different branches of government, um, they're reserved for, for the states to exercise. And the important thing here is that in terms of regional power, um, in, a, in a federal system, um, power is distributed between um, the federal government and the states, so the states have their own set of unalienable rights, okay, which the which the federal government cannot really impede upon. And although power is distributed between the federal government and the states unevenly in the US, 
um, there are certain rights that the states have um, and certain areas where they have jurisdiction upon. Um, and if the state governments have any problems with the federal government and any sort of issues arise between both, um, then those issues, those cases can be taken to um, the courts for them to um, be settled. Um, now, obviously, the important difference here is that um, in the UK, we have a unitary system where um, UK Parliament is the, the legal sovereign um, institution and the all ultimate sovereignty rests with, um, with Parliament. And so that means that where power has been devolved to um, administrations across the UK, such as Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, um, those powers in effect, because Parliament retains legal sovereignty, all of those powers, um, albeit this scenario being quite unthinkable, virtually inconceivable, um, UK Parliament has the ability to take those powers back, okay, even though that is very, very unlikely. Um, and obviously devolution across the UK has been approved through the process of referendums, um, and therefore it is likely that only a referendum could, could reverse those, those devolved powers um, provided to each of the devolved administrations. Um, another thing to focus on is the fact that, of course, um, whilst these devolved administrations um, exercise political sovereignty, um, they do not exercise any legal sovereignty. That rests with Parliament. Um, and of course, devolution in the UK is asymmetric. So certain devolved administrations have more powers um, than other devolved administrations. So, for example, Scotland, the Scottish Parliament, has more power than the Welsh um, and Northern Ireland assemblies. Okay, so that is another important point um, to draw out. Um, and finally, you can have a read of this this model paragraph, which you can essentially use um, in your answer. Okay, now it's up to you whether you want to um, reword this or um, sort of remold this um, according to your own to your own writing style. Um, but this is a this is a high um, high level um, model paragraph, um, and if you write three of these three paragraphs um, to this standard, you will be getting between sort of ten to twelve marks. Um, so obviously, this paragraph starts off with a clear signpost sentence. One key difference between the U.S. and UK constitutions is the way in which they can be amended. So we're think we're focusing on the significant difference between the U.S. and UK constitutions. In, in terms of and in relation to the amendment process, the ways in which they can be amended. So the US Constitution is, is entrenched and is therefore safeguarded from short-term amendments through the complex amendment process, whereas the UK Constitution is unentrenched and can thus be amended through a simple act of parliament. Now that's a little bit of analysis there because we're linking um, the ways in which the, the constitutions can be amended to the nature um, of the Constitution, the fact that the US Constitution is entrenched and the UK Constitution is unentrenched. So by making that wider analytical point, we're able to explain our knowledge and understanding of how the Constitutions can be amended. Um, and this, this answer, this paragraph then gets into that. So in the US to pass a constitutional amendment, a two-thirds supermajority is required in both chambers of Congress and three-quarters of state legislators, 38 out of 50, are needed to ratify the amendment, outlining that sort of two-stage amendment process in the, in the USA. However, in the UK, the constitution is easily changed through a bill being passed in the House of Commons by a simple majority. Um, now, this is another analytical point. Due to the doctrine of parliamentary sovereignty, UK Parliament can make amend and repeal laws and the current parliament cannot be bound by its predecessors and nor can it bind its successors. Indeed, there's only been 27 amendments to the US Constitution in the last 230 years as a result of its entrenched nature, demonstrating how the amendment process provides a much stronger structure in the US than the UK, that it's much more difficult to amend the US Constitution than it is um, the UK Constitution. So this is just a sort of final way to round off your paragraph. Um, to reinforce, to reiterate that significant difference between the constitutions. Um, so therefore, the differing nature of both constitutions um, in terms of its entrenchment, the, the nature of its entrenchment, um, has consequences for the amendment processes in both the US uh, and the UK, um, with the US having a more rigorous and complex process, whilst the UK has a relatively simple process of amending their constitution. Um, 
So really what you need to do now, now that this paragraph is written for you, you need to write um, a second and third paragraph on uh, the US Constitution and the fact that it has a complete separation of powers in contrast to the fact that the UK has a fusion of powers, okay? Um, and your third paragraph can be um, the, the federal system in the, U, in the USA against the, the unitary system in the UK. Um, and then you're, there you're exploring um, the differences in, in regional power um, and how both countries um, distribute regional power. Um, now, another thing here is that one, one really key significant difference between the US and UK constitutions is also um, the, nature, the nature of the constitutions in the sense that um, the US constitution is codified, but the UK constitution is uncodified. Now, although um, that is a significant, although codif codification differs across both constitutions, and although it is a significant difference, um, it is really difficult for you to make a paragraph of this sort of high standard and in this amount of detail on just um, the fact that the US Constitution is codified, but the UK Constitution is uncodified. So whilst that is a, a, um, a point worthy of mention, um, it perhaps doesn't really fit into this answer um, or isn't as appropriate for answering this question because there's not really much that you can write about apart from the fact that the US Constitution is codified and therefore uh, it's written in one single document, um, written at one, one particular point in the country's history, whereas the UK Constitution is uncodified and therefore it continues to evolve and um, the fact that the UK Constitution is located across many different sources such as common law, uh, simple acts of parliament and authoritative works. Um, that's as much detail as you can perhaps go into. So it's not really worth writing or dedicating a full paragraph um, to, to codification, which is why these two paragraphs um, are easier um, to write on. Um, and this is really a simple 12 mark question, okay? It's quite broad and therefore it allows you to write, um, write in depth on a number of, a number of different points. Um, and so your job um, is to just write two extra paragraphs because you already have this one um, done for you and it's up to you. You can either use this one or you can remold it um, according to your own writing style. Um, it would be really, really helpful if you could get this in for for Monday. So next Monday is the deadline that I'm setting for this um, so that I can get them marked as soon as possible. And of course, there's no point me um, putting this video up for you and then you doing the work in about three to four weeks um, or just before we come back in September. The point is that this video and this work gets set and then you do it as soon as possible um, for Monday, which is a strict deadline, um, so that I can mark it, give you feedback, give you your mark, and then we're ready to move on in September. Um, and that also means that you don't have much, well, any politics work to do over the summer holidays, and you can have um, a relaxed summer holidays without having to worry about any politics work. Um, I hope that's helped, um, and so please get this in for Monday.